What's up, YouTube? How are you guys doing? So here's the deal. When I was at Telltale Games, I was there for nearly seven years. The last year I was there, I ended up changing from the cinematic arts department into being a show host kind of community manager there. And we ended up creating all this really cool content for YouTube, Twitch, and Mixer. Stuff like interviewing my fellow game developers, showcasing all the hard work that went into these episodes, a lot of behind the scenes stuff. And I guess it's even more important now, more so than ever, because a lot of these games you can no longer play, sadly, uh, like Minecraft story mode. So please enjoy. We're going to be putting out for episode one, two, and three with a few different game developer friends. If you want to see some Batman stuff and some Guardians of the Galaxy, those videos were posted a while back. But I hope you guys enjoy. And thank you so much for watching. Okay, yeah, that's what I was waiting for. Look at that. Timex, thirty-five dollars. I thought you were reaching in to like do a, like a nipple twister or something like that, just on camera. No, we're reaching in. Just... That would be cruel. <laughs> I prefer to be cruel with my words, not my hands. <laughs> What's up, everybody? How are you guys doing? I am Ryan Weller, and welcome on into the player space, where we get to hang out with some of my cool, awesome developer friends. And speaking of which, here's Stephen McManus. Hello. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing, doing good. Yeah. So you, you did a few things on this. I did. I was involved quite extensively in mm -hmm. Minecraft Story Mode, Episode One. Wow. I gotta say that was that was a nice intro. You you nailed that. Here, can I get get a little? There we go. That. Perfect. All, All right. right. Well, it can only go down from here. No. Well, also apparently my 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 camera angle. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I looked over and I'm like. Your intro came out fine, but it's called like art, man. <laughs> it's called taking a chance. It's, it's called. There's nothing but it's called. Head. It's called being, being an artist. Okay. Actually, that's perfect. That's the one we're going to use. Where it's just me yeah, right here. That's good. The money maker. That's all you need to see. That's right. <laughs> Your neck is not, no, not necessary. Everything from the neck down is stupid. Yeah, the neck up, slightly less. Yes, slightly less. Only so. slightly. Only slightly less. So <laughs> this is good. This is good. Getting berated on my own day. I'm show. sorry. No, this no. You you trust me. Okay. Whatever you say is probably what the comments already want to say. Yep. So if you could just make sure you 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 just I've channel. Got my finger on the pulse. Yes. Of the comments. Yes. At the moment. Yeah. It's just at this particular moment. This particular moment, right there. <laughs> if you could just channel the, the comment section, mm -hmm. it'll save us a world of hurt. Fantastic. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, my name is Steve McManus. I'm a designer here at Telltale Games. I've been working here about four years, actually a little over four years, and I've worked on Walking Dead Season Two, Walking Dead Season Three, Tales from the Borderlands. Minecraft Story Mode Season 1 and Season 2, and I like Chunky. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to take a drink of, you know what, you can guess at home whatever I'm drinking. Vodka, mm. straight up. Oh, mm. tough, tough stuff. Mm. Mastrovia. Uh, <laughs> da. Uh, <laughs> we're going to hit play. All oh, right, now, out of curiosity... Part. Yeah, uh, we have, of course, the male Jesse, and we have the female Jesse. What do you particularly like to play? I'm a fan of female Jesse. Really? Yeah. I'm oh, a why big, is that? I'm a big fan of Cat Tabor. She's mm -hmm. uh, excellent. I mean, let me tell you, Pat Oswalt, yeah. also great. Yeah. No flies on him at all. But yeah. Cat Tabor, to me personally, uh -huh. um, when I'm designing and playing the game, I feel like she's. I mean, she is my Jesse. Okay. As a player right. and as a kind of, you know, if I got to, I got to pick somebody. Yeah. I mean, everyone has to pick their favorite child. Of right? course. Everybody does. It's it's a thing, <laughs> and for me, it's it's female Jesse. I uh, see. I, I'd actually, I'd have to be on the other side. I, I like I like Patton. I mean, he, okay. He he speaks for the nerd. You know. Are we, are we gonna Rochambeau? Uh, no, it? no. I, you know, it is it is guest choice. Okay. So, uh, comment section once again. Feel free to fill in how wrong of a choice uh, Stephen just made. Um, <laughs> I'm just, just back no up. Choices. Just back up that There's bus no, right there now. There are just, no wrong answers. Oh, um, I don't know about that in life. Uh, but which one would you want? You want yellow ribbon, red ribbon, or blue ribbon? Um, I'm going to take red ribbon. Red ribbon for 500? Red ribbon for 500. Okay. There's something about those, those tan overalls. <laughs> it's a good look with the red. It's, it's a, se the, it's, it's a sexy the, look. And the teal, yeah. the teal shirt. Yeah. It's just. Uh, it's doing it for you. She needs a little help. She needs a little help in the, in the fashion department. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> but it's okay. She's not here to walk the runway. She's here to to mine and to craft. Oh, to, to, mi to mine and to craft. Both. Okay, both yeah. at the same time, mm -hmm. hopefully. All right, good. So, I don't know if you knew this, but the game series adapts to the choices you make. Uh, we have to have that tattooed on our uh, yeah. eyelids. Yeah. So we never forget. You know how pro of a YouTuber slash streamer I am? How pro are you? Uh, I didn't put on subtitles. Oh! That is... You know, that's an interesting question. Um, uh -huh. As a game developer here at Telltale, we have subtitles on all the time because, you know, there's a period of time when the lines are written but the, the, the lines aren't recorded. So yeah. to know what's going on, you need subtitles. And we yeah. just kind of leave them on, you know, obviously to keep an eye out for any mismatches and things like that. But I'd be curious to know how many people play with subtitles versus, it, you know, no subtitles. Well, I do know typically like in, in the streamer world and, and whatnot, you gotta have your subtitles on yeah. uh, for everything, for a lot of different reasons, but uh, In case the volume yeah. has to get turned down, you gotta yeah. know what's going on. Yeah. yeah. And for our purposes, uh, because we can't have the volume up too much, it's especially helpful, I think, I feel for us. So, uh, I know, this is something that it, it's always asked every first episode. Mm -hmm. But please do go into detail a little <laughs> bit of um, how difficult it was to uh, put out this first episode. It was extremely difficult. We you uh, don't say. Yeah, we had a. I mean, we had a relatively epic story to tell <laughs> and to kick off. Mm -hmm. We had a whole, uh, you know, essentially like super team, a, a group of superheroes in the Minecraft universe. Oh, and by the way, there really was no history of any kind of, you know, organization or yeah. you know, there's no Justice League in Minecraft. No. Before the Order of the Stone. I mean, we. We had to make all that up and we had to, you know, figure out who the different characters are, the, the character balances, all these sort of archetypes. We used, we used tra you know, traditional Minecraft uh, interests, warrior, redstone architect to, to, to do this, but yeah. just Very getting- Very D&D-ish. Exactly, sort of just, just finding the right epic uh, story yeah. that would fit into the universe. Obviously the, the, the Ender Dragon is huge. This is yeah. sort of the, we, the, we really, Got excited about the idea that we start our story with mm -hmm. the end game. Yeah, because that is what a lot of everyone is working towards. Yeah, to be able to get to that moment. Well, because I, I remember when we first mentioned Telltale is making Minecraft. Everyone's like, "What? How's that like, gonna work? Yeah. How does this? It, it was. It was even more of a." How does this make sense moment then when we did Tales from the Borderlands? Yeah. And everyone's like, how is this gonna work? I feel like same thing here is is well, was I'll, very well. I'll tell you, the first people who now, ever- Now real quick, what should we choose? Zombie sized chicken or chicken sized zombies? Oh, zombie sized chickens. Of okay. course. All right. Anyway, sorry, interrupted, so. Oh, well, I was, I was just gonna say, the first people ever in the world to say, how the hell is that going to work? Yeah. Were the actual people that had to make it work. <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was no easy thing to sort of create, uh, create a, a, a story, characters, narratives, themes from, um, from a source material that was really based on mm -hmm. uh, a world that the, the player could engage with and, and sort of, they, it tell, they usually it's either a story, a very sort of solitary story when you're yeah. playing solo, or in a community it's really much more a story that you're creating with your friends, and the world itself doesn't have as much uh, doesn't doesn't have as much to say, or there's no there's the the sense of community is really homegrown when it comes to players. There's no there's nothing no one telling anybody how things are. Yeah, you know? and well, and the fans have created a ton of stories already by this point in yeah. time yes. on YouTube and that kind of stuff, which actually did influence. I understand a little is. like what we did. Now I, I can't help but uh, feeling like that there's also kind of a Goonies-esque kind of feel oh, to yes. a little bit of this. So Absolutely. what were some of your well-known influences when you guys were attacking this? We were like, how, what are we gonna do here? How are we gonna make this game? Like what were then some of those outside influences that fed into you finding this own kind of like design and narrative? Goonies was a very big influence on the story. Mm -hmm. um, Creating uh, uh, that that sort of kids like uh, kids on an adventure. Yeah. Um, different personality types within a group, a, a group of misfits, mm -hmm. people that are kind of uh, you know, especially um, Jesse's friends are you know, as we'll see soon, are not necessarily the coolest kids on the block. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly enough, Stand by Me. 
oh, was a really? was a was a bit of an influence. Yes, indeed. So, by the way, I'm just going to say to our younger audience, if you haven't seen that movie and your parents are cool with it, it's an awesome movie to look back on. It is. It's yeah. a, it's 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 definitely uh, it's it's got some it's got some language, but yeah. um, but as far as just a uh, you know minus the the R-rated elements, yeah, the the camaraderie between those kids was very much what we wanted to see in, yeah. in our story. So for me anyway, that was a that was a big influence. I think I think that's really cool. Yeah. Any any other like we mentioned, you know, D and D, you know, kind of like kind of that archetypes yeah. and that kind of stuff. Any anything any other kind of outside influences? Um, I think Hurry up and grab your stuff. that we'll meet you downstairs. Okay. You know, there was this okay. you know that it's interesting that, you know, this predates it a little bit, but that mm. that real Spielbergian vibe mm. um, that, that Stranger Things is kind of Kind of picked yeah. up on Stranger yeah. Things is really just yeah. nailed it with that kind and, of vibe. And I think even I mean, <clears throat> you know, when you think of a movie like E. T., mm, you know, yeah. we think about you know the relationship between Elliot and the and the alien, but there's a lot of really good sort of um adventure kids kind of just Never doing know. their own thing, sort of the parents are sort of out of the you know, completely out of the loop. This is yeah. I mean, Minecraft is a world without parents. Yeah, you know, these that's are true. these are all just people who are essentially kids. And they're off having having those kinds of adventures, you know. I guess if this was the 1930s, it would be like the you know the Little Rascals, or perhaps. Well, it is you know, true if that I can just get as old as possible with my references. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the 30s and say, perhaps the Little Rascals were a big influence. I will say that it it is it is strange from some of the movies that I grew up with to what we have had for the longest period of times. They did kind of go away from the whole like kids going on fantastical adventures. Yeah for quite a while, and then it was, yeah, it was Stranger Things that kind of like brought that back in, mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah, but, but I like to say we got it there a little earlier. Oh, well, of course. You know, and maybe Stranger Things totally ripped us off. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say so, but maybe someone would say You know, that. I'm calling out the writers and designers of Stranger Things uh, uh, to mention something in the comments and uh, let us know. Was it Telltale that was your influence? It was your muse. So, oh, by the way, before we move on to this, uh, before I click on the door, you gotta have to talk about Ruben. Ruben. What, what made you guys, like, we need a pet? Because, I mean, Ruben is definitely here in this season. Yep. Uh, and by the way, I'm gonna say this right now, quick little disclaimer. We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna pause this, we're gonna cut from here. Little disclaimer, if you haven't played through the entire season, there's going to be a few spoilers here and there that we're gonna talk about. So, I'm guessing that if you've, you're watching this, you've played through. So, there you go. There's your spoiler alert. Mm -hmm. You have been warned. I'm not going to gratuitously spoil anything, though. But I, I'm really? going to pledge to be. Really? Unless the situation calls for it, I'm not going to, I'm not going to inadvertently or maliciously go out of my way to ruin anyone's experience. Something bad happens to Ruben. <laughs> ah. <laughs> but. As far as Ruben goes, I would say Ruben, Ruben may have been on the character list mm -hmm. before absolutely anyone. Really? Oh, yeah. That was, like, it was a pig? Page, day one, page one. Oh, wow. Pet pig. Like more than any other character? Uh, in, as my memory, if memory serves, I would say he was, he was figured out, nailed down. Our main character has an adorable pet pig. Yeah. And his name, Ruben, may have been a day two wow. revelation. Yeah. That's that's actually pretty cool to know. So like out of everything that we're seeing here, the first thing that was locked down was was the pet. Pretty close. Pretty close. I mean, you know, some might argue, but they're not in this room, so they can... They and can, I'm definitely not going to argue with they you. They can so. sit in their office and rattle their sabers and say, no, that's not how it was, but, you know, that's, that's how, how I remember it. That's how you remember it. That's how I remember it. Well, that, um, that is really cool, though. Yeah. That's, that's kind of awesome to think about. Uh, so when it comes to, then, the costume that you're bringing in that, you know, Ruben, of course, is, is wear, uh, wearing and whatnot, any, any, what were the discussions like for... Or was everyone like, dragon, totally dragon? Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, if I could give you a little bit of a behind the scenes. That's what this whole thing's about? Um, there was an original draft mm -hmm. of the script that featured um, a play. Yeah. And uh, the idea was is that the play was about the Order of the Stone destroying mm -hmm. the Ender Dragon, defeating the Ender Dragon. Yeah. And um, there was, a, there was a, a donkey. A donkey in an Ender Dragon costume. Okay. As part of the play. All right. And at some point, um, uh, 
Ruben gets the costume, uh -huh. and this is where my memory gets a little fuzzy about the actual details, but yeah. the idea of Ruben in an Ender Dragon costume survived that original draft. Uh -huh. And when we decided to go in more of a direction where I think Endercon became more of a, uh, we, we, we veered more into the experience that's, that's more Minecrafty. y you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, the idea that the characters would be very interested in uh, building contests. I mean, this to me seems, you know. This is almost more, real life in a way. Exactly. And what was wonderful is we had this costume idea. Mm -hmm. And then once we had, a, we had a con, we had cosplay. Which one do you want to do, by the way? Endermen. Endermen oh. are cool. Ooh. Nice. And the costume lived and mm -hmm. ultimately became, I believe, the most awesome thing. In this particular scene. <laughs> well, it is kind of cool that uh, we have a pig dressed up as a dragon, of yeah. course. Yeah. And I'm already really liking all the choices that you know we have going on through here, uh, from what we can build because it's all once again it's all about that that crafting side mm -hmm. they can get from Minecraft, and you got to have plenty of choices that kind of allow the the player to get their own kind of creativity into there. So yeah. I, I think it's pretty cool. The, the way that, that everyone's been able to do that here. And then of course, why well, so please tell me, what influences montage? <laughs> well, again, <laughs> there were enough people on the team that remembered the 80s. Oh God, yeah. So it, to say, I'm just gonna use the term the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> the the uh, films of the 80s. I think of Rocky, it does totally. Rocky. Yeah. Um, uh, Karate Kid. Yeah, Karate Kid. Karate Kid. Kid. That's I like how one. the pig is basically like the sensei. Yes. Back there the entire time. Yes. Oh. That's sort of a, almost got a Kill Bill vibe. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, the flowers. Oh, the flowers. Look at that. Like a. Like oh, a, and yeah, like this, just the pig is just mm -hmm. like yes. <laughs> I just like how it just keeps on helping you work out. And this is, I mean, you know, the important thing about the first act here is that. The story gets pretty intense. Yeah. And so we really wanted to have a bit of time where the player could just have fun doing not only Minecraft things, yeah. the expected, yeah. but the unexpected because we have so much. Um, the yeah. freeze. The freeze. Like everything in this is like 80s, 90s. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. It was fun to do. Yeah. Because it is true, it does start to get a little, a little heavy, gets it gets serious, heavy. and mm -hmm. and that it's, uh, oh, it's heavy. Uh, yep. Sorry, um, <laughs> and you know it is kind of nice having this this lightness mm -hmm. here and everything else. And I do like that we have so Endercon. Is this supposed to be like representative, like Comic Con or? Yeah, Comic Con. Um, uh, the. The Minecraft theme con, mm -hmm. whose name escapes me at the moment. It That's does real. for me as well. Let me tell you, everyone's really proud of me right now. Oh yeah, really, oh, yeah. really. Like, Comment section is a yes. blaze oh, right now. Oh, they're like, are you, you, you did not remember the name of Minecon? Excuse me, I, I do believe it's. Ah! I believe it is Minecon. Minecon. As I was, as I was saying not, I didn't know, I realized not craft con? it's Minecon. Minecon. Okay, okay Minecon. Um, yeah, no, I think that's that's definitely. Uh, what do you want? What do you want to be? Or the pig. That's I, the that, that is, I think, the classic good one to pick. Yeah, that's a that's a, a standard. Yep, yep. 